Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, we're going back in for the Continental Challenges with another How to Beat. This time, we're going to go for the Boss Week 2 Ice, which of course is Radiance. Today's video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods, my favorite sponsor because it's my favorite game that I've played in a long time. Be sure to join us for Season 3, Dive Deep, Battle Peak. There's a ton of new heroes, new bosses, and lots to explore. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already, and use the currently working promo codes. Alrighty, so this boss takes cold damage from our ice heroes. Um, extra, of course, just like all the others. They all have their weakness. And this is our Radiance boss. So this boss is, uh, well, pretty much Sheena, actually. And if you haven't already seen it, I do want to mention I have done videos on the necrotic boss that's weak to fire. And the Lightning Boss Week 2 Radiance. So you can check those out if you haven't already. The teams are not necessarily perfect. The, most of these are just my first playthroughs. But the whole point of this video is to talk about the bosses and how to best combat them. So here we go. Radiance Boss. Let's take a look. This boss is Sheena. Literally. So the passive has 50% chance of gaining one stack of Radiance Crystal. When the monster deals damage with their skills. Just like those ice crystals, uh, the skills gain extra effects, five stacks at most. Of course, they're a weak or they're immune to control effects, and they have the same thing with this damage bonus over time. So the first skill generates an orb after a brief channeling, dealing radiant damage to the target. For each stack of radiance crystal the monster has generates an extra orb. So this is the same skill for the first two. And then the ultimate cast a spell for six seconds, during which a random enemy is attacked every 0.5 seconds with each attack dealing radiant damage. So this boss is a lot like last season where it's full board random attack. So your positioning does not matter as far as avoiding attacks from the boss, uh, just like the Alton boss. But this one's actually even easier than the Alton boss in season two. It's just simply, it's only got one skill that does random attacks, the ultimate. So it's really not that bad for keeping everybody alive. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and I'm gonna show a team. I'm pretty sure I've seen quite a few people use this exact same team. So this might not be new for you, but at least we can talk about kind of what's best, right? So overall, um, this boss is, let's see. This boss is weak to ice, simple enough. And um, yeah, the ice heroes, Ice Blast and Frost are both going to do very well here. I actually do want to point out, if you're like me and you have like Oster and Drist already built, and maybe you got Garethan and Sheena built or Garethan and Zorak or something else kind of already built, but you didn't have enough resources to build everybody for a four man um dps ice blast team due to frost due to ice blast and you might be surprised at the damage i saw some people doing a mixture of frost and ice blast heroes because that's what they had built like for me i use obviously drist and oster are amazing for like goblin and aoe type stuff and the ice blast was great to play with um well ice blast i built specifically for this to be honest but a lot of people are using that for their vortex teams so if you're already using a Vortex team, um, why not? So all right, let me go here. If you're already using Ice Blast, you might as well use it. So don't worry about my gear necessarily. This is, again, or the fact that I have um, two legendaries or whatever. That's not what this video is about. We're just going to talk about why I'm making the choices I'm making, again, and the fact of how to beat this boss. And this boss kind of is the, mo the easiest for sure. Uh, and you're not going to struggle too much. You'll be able to make teams with the budget versions of these Ice Blast heroes like Bloodin. Um, let me go ahead and pop out of here. I actually don't even, do I even have, okay, I do have skill timings. 
So for me, Bloodin is the one who is in Witch's Remains. So he goes, um, he goes after Zorak though, because Zorak is just putting up a buff, not doing damage. Uh, so for him, he can buff Bloodin before Bloodin hits, and then Sheena goes after. And then I just have Gareth in full YOLO because she goes a lot more often with this 15 seconds. So she's full YOLO. It's not perfect. I we could definitely work with her timings as well. Um, shout out to Pip in my Discord there. Uh, he I know got a little bit better than me. I think he got like one when I did this team. I'm on my second reset now. I did this team yesterday as of this recording, and that was a hundred and two million that this team actually got, guys. It was really good. Uh, but he's got 122, I think, was his last one I saw. And he did work with trying to find the perfect starting time for Garethan to be able to time well with everything else. Like, um, And that kind of goes along with not necessarily the ultimate being the most important. But don't forget that when they use their ultimate, it affects when their battle skills are used as well. So that's kind of the thought process there. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is gonna. I'm just gonna show you guys what my first playthrough was, and honestly, I didn't even time Furboth, which is funny. Technically, I probably should time him or get him to 18 seconds to where he's always putting up attack penalty here. But we last the whole fight, so if you're lasting the whole fight and no one dies, don't worry about min maxing your survivability things because no one's dying. <laughs> you're fine. That's when you know you can push other stuff or push more damage. All right, so let's go. All right. And oops, I actually just realized I never adjusted Sheena to go after Bloodin, at least a little bit. Although you really wouldn't miss too much. You'd miss like one attack, but might as well make her wait till after Bloodin has done his attacks to put up the defense penalty from Witch's Remains before I have her go. So I'm just going to adjust that back a little bit. So Zorak is going to go first, then Bloodin, then Gina, and overall Garethan is going to be on a YOLO. And again, it is, like I said, it's more about the battle skills anyway, but in this case, if we can put up the buff, put up defense penalty before Sheena starts going, we're going to help Sheena's damage as well, so... Let's do that. All right, we didn't really change anything. And yeah, this is gonna be Furboth as the only healer. I do have him in Mona Lisa set, or sorry, puppet tier set because of the defense to help the every everyone else survive easily. Um, especially, I mean, it's random, so you could get unlucky and have a bunch of the hits hit one person in a row. And there's a little extra healing thrown in there as well. And I do have the Moonlight Mantle set on him, which is a really bad chest. It's flat defense, but I I do find that some even the flat sets uh, for some of these, like this, 50% chance of 50% increased healing or shield. Like that's a lot more healing than what I lose from just uh, losing a stack of a, a big bunch of defense. Not ideal, but hey, it's what I'm using for now. I do not have perfect gear by any means, so we're working on it. Uh, and then, of course, Garethan is our main DPS. She's in Ravatrix Roots, which is such a good artifact, of course. Uh, this is best for people that are not legendary heroes, and I do have her in an Emperor set. Emperor is probably the way to go, just like last season. I just I only have like one set of Emperor that's decent maybe two, and I still can't get ideal stats. I do have her in crit rate gloves because of this defense penalty buff here. I, I wish I could had crit damage and then could try to push her crit rate through other, um, yeah, as you can see, my crit rate is over the 80, but yeah, she gets this 20 bonus from her battle skill. But my runes suck as well. I got kind of lucky with this double crit rate roll. That's about it. Like, I don't have the best runes. I don't have the best gear. Uh, Zorak, I've seen people are, uh, I guess, Zorak has a lot of ways you can build him. I went with the fan, um, because the derivative damage here is really important, uh, and this is a really nice piece. 
And I, I don't have a lot of the other sets for gloves. Like, I just went with this one to give him more damage when under defense penalty, which has at least one enlightenment roll. So he doesn't have the best stats. Honestly, his enlightenment's kind of low. It's only like three. I mean, it's over 300 at least. Early on, it's not so bad. But I don't have big rolls of enlightenment. See, I have like two, one, and then of course the chest, and then I have one here. I do have a couple enlightenment runes, luckily. So that was good. And then again, here I had nothing um, for enlightenment rolls for my ice blast people, or for ice negative runes. I just had nothing that made sense. So I kind of just went with the defense to give him a little bit of survivability because he was really squishy without it. And that's where he went. But you could go ahead and do stuff like, um, I will shout out to Pip because I know he was, he was the one discussing it. That he actually, and I mentioned him already, uh, that he used the hourglass and then you could use like the glove that deals with skill haste. I have zero of those gloves. So I kind of want to just stick to this right now. And ideally with the fan, you want them far away as possible. But because Furboth is my healer, I need him to be within reach. So I kind of have him here. And he does receive the healing properly in this spot. And at least he's still multiple tiles away. Um, all right, and I did decide to change my gear on Blood In to give him some actual crit rate instead of just the defense percentage glove um, where he had no crit rate pretty much and defense penalty. So this but, all right, that's that's my team, guys. And Sheena, oh yeah, sorry. Sheena is in Emperor set as well. And again, far from ideal for the substats. Um, she could have a lot more crit rate, ideally, but at least we... Oh, wait, no, we're good. We do have this that gives 15% crit rate, the hook. Um, but yeah, there's my Sheena. Nothing fancy, not ideal, not perfect. And the only aura I have is Bloodin's HP aura. But you could use any of the Ice Blast heroes. You can definitely use Sadiq as well or nord honestly the rare people are doing very well with i could definitely see using the rare um instead of of i don't know if you don't have zorak or whatever just use the rare you're fine and he's gonna do a surprising amount of damage as well so you could definitely get away with four dps plus fur boss which is really awesome and you don't even need this horn this horn is just an attack boost so that's just gonna boost my damage overall uh, you can put other artifacts on for both whatever you have just work with it but yeah the ice blast and frost good to go versus this boss and really when it comes down to positioning you're just going to position what you need for your team not for versus the boss obviously have a tank that kind of goes without saying but everyone else it's it doesn't matter where they are because it's random attacks and it only matters for me because Furboth has this very specific healing radius. So depending on who you're using, just be aware. And then for me, because I'm using the fan, being the furthest away from the boss as possible is ideal. So that's kind of where my positioning matters. But depending on your team, your position might not really matter that much at all. But all right, I'm going to roll this and then show you the result. So this is going to be a little bit different than my first run versus this boss yeah, that I did the day before. But I want to see if we can actually get a little more damage out of Blood in along the way. He's obviously not perfectly built for damage. He does have Witch's Remains, of course, but maybe we could squeeze a little bit extra out.
right, and we did better than I did yesterday with 102. This is 104. Fixing my timing plus giving blood in a tiny bit more love, I did even better. So really happy to see that, especially given that all my heroes are not level 100 as well as far as the DPS goes. Of course, Garethan is a star of the show, but hey, I'm quite happy with this one. Um, I'm definitely sure that I could min max the crap out of this too, but I'm going to take it. So I hope this at least gave you guys some ideas to maybe try doing a single support like Furbot that can give you attack penalty, healing, and be your tank, plus using four DPS for Ice Blast or Frost. So hope this was fun and helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already. And thanks again to Dragonair Silent Gods for sponsoring today's video.